What's on Your Mind is sponsored by ACC 339 New Newstyle Radio 98.7 FM, Breakthrough Studios and Reggae Jam Jam. Good afternoon guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another program in the series of What's on Your Mind. The program is produced by Breakthrough TV and I am Carl. Hope all is well with you. I want to say thanks to all you guys who tune into the program. Also want to say to my very special guest last week, Mr. Tony Mead. Tony has a song called Jim Love. Now, if you want to know what Jim Love is all about, you need to go and check that tune out. Also want to say big shout out to Mr. Stan Aniti. Stan Aniti got a lot of music out as well. Go and check his music out. He was also on this program. All you guys who's been on this program, let me say thank you for being on the program. Let me say thank you for supporting the program. All of you guys still subscribing to the channel, let me say thank you. And our subscri subscription is going up a little bit, you know what I mean? So let me say thank you. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the program so we can actually continue to making wonderful program like that. Because we are getting a very, very good feedback. Here. Let me say thank you. And thanks to all you guys, as I say, who actually tune into the program. I've got a wonderful guest in the studio this week. And he's actually, he's an international producer, a playwright, a director, and he, his work has been marvellous. And his work is also staged at all the main venues in the United Kingdom. I want to say a big shout out to you, Mr. J.D. Douglas. How are you, sir? Pleasure to be on your program, sir. Pleasure, absolutely. How's your day been? Not bad. I got up this morning and I thought, what am I going to do? I almost jumped on the train to London, but I thought, no, Carl will hunt me down. Sir, I'm here. Just for you, sir. Yes, and we, it's been a while because we've been trying to hook you up for quite a long time because I know we're a busy man. And we're sometimes very busy as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, folks, let me tell you the true story, right? Yes. He said I'm a busy man. This gentleman and his producer has been invited for dinner at my house how many times? <laughs> How many times? Your honor. Your honor. And he has refused. I so have, I have refused. If I get up and I walk out of this interview, it's because he has snubbed me before, okay? <laughs> and that is that is that true. Why are you doing that to me? <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention I only live a block away from this studio. You only live a block away from this yes. studio. I'm and he didn't come. And, 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 and such, a, such, a, such a legend you are. And you only live a black from the studio. You know, I mean, just down the road. Yeah, yeah, which is absolutely yeah. marvellous. And um, you've got a mutual friend that we actually, you know, you know the guy who wears glasses and have uh, that well, sort of thing. Well, tonight, just for you, yes. I'm going to be Matthew. Who, who, I, I know who that is. Who is that? I know this. He's an artist called Momo Watts. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he? <laughs> now, what you guys don't know, everywhere that Momo wants go, he brings two pairs of sunglasses, okay? Yeah. This is the first. Number that, two. That is second. Momo wants. Yeah. Absolutely great. <laughs> he, he, he came on this shot. He was, he was absolutely great. We had a great laugh. You know, you know, yeah. <laughs> He's a great man. I, I saw the interview. I, yeah. And what was good about it, he travels. He takes it in his time, but he actually yeah. makes his journey to this studio, which is quite a way, because, you know, he lives down south, doesn't he? Yes, yes, he, yes. He, he takes it any time, but he didn't get any money for it. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can't afford to pay anybody. <laughs> what? So that was, that was, I always said big, big thanks, you know what I mean, yeah. to Momo. You know, it, was, it was actually marvellous, you know what I mean? Wonderful artist. Yeah. Wonderful Wonderful friend, great interview you guys did, honestly. Yeah, it was actually, it was actually, marvelous. we enjoyed it and we, a lot of people actually enjoyed that interview. And you can go and see that interview as well, you guys, check it out, yeah. Now, as, as I said, I know you've had a wonderful journey mm -hmm. and you've, you've been in the theatre for a long time, you've wrote quite a few books mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. We're going to talk about your journey a little bit later on, mm -hmm. yes. But, you know, I always look at a few things that's happening across the world. This week, a lot of the things are actually happens in the UK. So, I wanna, um, uh, you know, guys, it's, it's a setup of the program. We always like to share those things that are actually going on with you. Now, West Bromwich tribute has been paid to a 15-year-old boy who was stabbed. Isaac Brown was stabbed in West Bromwich on Sunday, 7th of August. 7th of April, I should say. He actually died. And police have actually arrested a 15-year-old mm -hmm. boy. So, we see more stabbing again. Let me move on my next story. My next story is also Bradford murder investigation. You must have seen this somewhere along the line. Suspected arrested. He actually was arrested 150 miles away. And he actually stabbed a young lady while she was pushing her pram in a baby, with, a, with, in the, with her baby, you know what I mean? And as I say, he, the, he, he, he did a runner and the police actually, um, actually found him 150 miles away, yeah. Guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the program. Now, 
Go to London. Police are still asking for witness after a man was stabbed to death near Tottenham Hotspur football ground. And this actually happens on Sunday. Mr. Iwahi died on Sunday. And the statistics has shown London. Violent deaths in London. 21 teenagers has been killed in London, according to data, um, in 2023. 21 has been by stabbing. Yeah. 18 was also stabbed. I should say 21 violent deaths. 18 was stabbed. Two were shot. And one was collided in an accident, which is absolutely disgusting. So, JD, what is happening on our streets? What is happening with knife crime? I know you know some years ago you actually did a poem about knife crime. Tell us a little about how you see knife crime. Well, I don't call it <coughs> knife crime. Mm -hmm. I call it knife madness. Yeah. Because I cannot understand. It's beyond comprehension. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Many years ago, I got a call from a gentleman called Ras Al. And he said to me, JD, in Enfield, we've got the highest black on black murders in the country in Enfield. Come and do some workshops. Mm -hmm. So we went down. We were doing the workshops. And we invited the parents of the murdered kids to talk to us. Yeah. And that was about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we couldn't believe how bad it was. 15 years later, it is still going on. That is why I call it madness. It is madness. It's and, madness. And, 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 and nobody seems to got an answer for it. Or is there an answer for it? Or the government is not just used, you finding the answer for it? Well, uh, be, 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 before I come to that, mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. Why I call it madness as well. Yeah. I went to producer's house mm -hmm. and on his piano, he had a picture of a young man. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, who is that? He said, that's my son. I said, okay, where is he? He's no longer with us. I said, what happened? He said, he was knife. And then I said, next to him, who is that? He said, that's his brother. I said, who, where is he? He's in prison. Why? A brother had knifed a brother. A true story. And that's when I realized there was something that's going on mm -hmm. beyond comprehension. It is. When a brother stabs a brother, yeah. there's a madness going on it is, there. It is so that madness. is why I wrote the poem, Knife Madness. Yeah, it, yeah. it is a madness. And the strange thing, I mean, in the last couple of days, since Saturday, one, there's been stabbing in London, there's been a stabbing in the jury court in Birmingham, mm -hmm. there's been the, the, the young man in West Bromwich, mm -hmm. and there's also been another two stabbing mm -hmm. since Saturday, mm -hmm. which is absolutely gone stupid, absolutely. Mm -hmm. As you say, knife madness. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I mean, in, in relation to how do we approach it and what the solution, I do not have that, but I've got a little insight, which is this. Three things to consider in knife crime when addressed in it, mm -hmm. okay? First of all, it has to be multifaceted in the approach. Okay. Number two, it has to be early intervention. Mm -hmm. And number three, it has to have a public health aspect into it. Yeah. When you break down tackling knife crime with the, from a public health point of view, mm -hmm. there are about four elements that you look at. You look at the police. You look at social services. Mm -hmm. You look at the youth offending and probation teams. You look at the NHS, but you also look at voluntary organizations. All of those organizations have to work together. together. Yeah. That's totally. the only way. Totally. Now, totally. before you start accusing me of being only theory, I can tell you, in Scotland, for instance, their approach is totally different because they've got what's called a violence reduction unit okay. in Scotland. Mm -hmm. And they use those five prongs to attack violence and knife crime. And in 2017, when they were doing it, the, the, 41 years ago, the figures were better in 2017 in the reduction of knife crimes and crime across Scotland mm. for more than the last 40, 41 years. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so there, it, it does work. And in America, there's certain programs as well. But it's having what's called crime reduction unit, and it has to be multifaceted working with the police, social services, youth offending team, NHS, and of course, voluntary groups all working together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with you. I totally yeah. agree with you. Wow, guys, that is heavy. I must say it is heavy because it, it is a serious matter. So that's, it why, is. It's it why, is. so that's why it is heavy. Um, let me move on. Now, 
There has been sad news across social media. The shooting of a 71-year-old man, Harry Hawthorne. He is, works at the Bauxite Company in Jamaica and Jamalco. And he was shot at a bar in May Penn on Friday night. And a teacher was also injured in that situation. Yeah. So you see more crazy things that is happening in the place of my birth. Yeah, I should say. And we're living abroad. When we see things like this, it, it really annoys you. Mm -hmm. It really makes you upset. And, we, and I've said this before, we coming from such a small place, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. See such things actually going on. And you think, what, what is going on? Brothers against brothers, mm -hmm. sister against, you know what I mean, sister. It's like there's a war, you know what I mean? It's like there's an invasion. You know, and that makes me so, so angry. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can also leave your comments in the box, yeah? Thank you. Now, more than 800 um, black females across the country have signed an open letter um, supporting Francesca Rivers. And she's an actress that was actually, after the announcement that she was actually playing, uh, she was cast in the production of Romeo and Ju Juliet. And she has a lot of racist abuse online. She hasn't been even put in the part yet. The play hasn't started yet. But she has a lot of abuse on social media because she's got the role in Romeo and Juliet. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Yeah. Now, let me move on. Now, I must say condolence to a wonderful sister from Birmingham. And condolence to the family of Karen Gardner. And she's a sister with the instrumental in developing of supplementary education in Birmingham. She actually, having run the school in Lee Bank, Birmingham, before working in support of Saturday schools. And she has recognized, she, she, she put this, this call to the situation where there was recognized qualification right up to standard. So, and she's actually, she's lost her life. So we say big, big condolence to her family and her friends. And also from Breakthrough TV and myself, big rest in peace. Don't forget guys to like, share and subscribe to the program. Now JD, you are the originator of the Paul Robins, Ro Robson exhibition. And you know a lot about Paul Robson. <laughs> Tell us about Paul Robeson and who was Paul Robeson. <laughs> well, I don't know much about many other things, but I suppose, um, according to his son, yes. Paul Robeson Jr., I'm a, I am a, a Paul Robeson expert, according to his son. Yeah. But maybe he still is having a half a, a, an off day when he when when he said that. But yes, um, uh, Paul Robeson was born in 1898 in Princeton, New Jersey. Yeah. And uh, he was one of the most remarkable, most accomplished men of the 20th century, full stop. Wow. He started out as a college football player, mm -hmm. and he's one of the best American football players at the time. He also was an actor. He was a concert pianist, concert singer. Yeah. He was also a film actor. Yeah. But more than that, he was a world-renowned activist. Yes, yes. Before Garvey, before Malcolm X, he was putting his neck on the line. He came to London in 1928 to do Showboat. Yeah. And when he came to London, he was doing a matinee. And he heard some singing downstairs. It was the time of the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And the Welsh miners had come to London okay. to demonstrate. Right. And Paul Robeson heard that harmony. And he went downstairs and he joined in the picket line. There was this big black man leading all of those white, the, the, those white gentlemen yeah. across the thing. And you know what he did? Yeah. All the money for the matinee, he didn't take it. He didn't take it. He gave it to them Marvelous. to pay, Marvelous. to go yeah. back. Yeah. And of course, you know, he played... Othello in 1930 at the Savoy Theatre. Yeah. And there's a famous picture of him with Peggy Ashcroft in London. Oh, he right. got his political awareness in, 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 in London. Now, what people don't know is that Paul Robeson, at the age of 23, was a lawyer. Okay? Wow. And wow. when the white secretary wouldn't take the dictation, mm. he walked out. Yeah. 
and that's when he stopped being a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He also spoke 25 languages. So that's some of the aspects of, of Paul Robeson. Yeah. Great, great. I, I must tell you, I've got, I've got a very, very, many, many moons ago, I bought it. A very, very, it's about six, six, six vinyls. Wow. In a case. It's still in that case. I think I bought it sometime in the 80s of Paul Robeson. Because my mother was a very, very big fan of good, Paul Robeson. Good. And my, my mother used to actually tell me about Paul Robeson. Good. And I, I get to learn a lot, actually, about Paul Robeson. Which was actually marvelous. You've been to West Germany. Tell us when you went to West Germany and how it was it. Yes, the 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 what happened was that um, uh, at the end of the sixties there was this fright from the left mm. that everything would be taken over by the right. Yeah. And so what did the, the there's a lady called Margaret who had lots of Paul ropes and memorabilia. Yeah. She didn't want to take the chance it would be destroyed. So what she did, she sent it to East Berlin. So they had all of Paul Robeson's um, memorabilia, photographs, but they didn't know who were in the photographs, if you can mm -hmm. imagine. So in 1983, the German government, part of the Academy de Kunst, which is the Academy of Arts, they heard of this mad guy in London doing Paul Robeson. So they sent for me to go to East Berlin. And I remember going across East Berlin and I took photographs of the big statues that they had. I went to the workers' camp. And they, they took me to all of the places where Angela Davis and all the comrades had been before. Mm. So I had a wonderful time. And there's Breck House. So there's the picture of me for sunglasses um, outside Breck House. Mm. So they took me to all of the cultural places in East Germany that they thought I should know. Um, one of the things that places that I really enjoyed going to, um, Paul Ropes in 1933 had played, uh, had done a play totally in German. Yeah. In 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 in, in uh, Brutus Jones, yeah. so I was taken to that theatre where Paul Robeson actually did the Brutus Jones entirely in German. So that was my trip to East Germany. Yes. Yeah. What about the exhibition? You um you, ex ex you did an exhibition memorial concert also. Yes. Um. It started with 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 with. It was a small exhibition in Cardiff, yeah. and then when I moved to work in London in 1983, I was the ethnic arts officer for the London Borough of Wandsworth. Yeah. So I decided to do the Paul Robeson exhibition now. Here am I, this little cog in the wheel. But Wandsworth Council was in fact a conservative run. And they didn't like the idea of a Paul Robeson exhibition in their main hall. Yeah. So the next thing you knew, my boss and his boss, they had discussions and meetings and the leader of the council came down and they checked the exhibition to make sure that there was no propaganda or many really communist propaganda in the exhibition before it could go on. Yeah. Then the GLC, a lady called Paminda Via, heard about it mm. through Paul Botan, and they said, listen, we've heard about your small exhibition, but this is more than a local exhibition. We will give you money to make it better. So I was given money, and together with a guy called Stephen Bourne, we went and we got all of the film stills, did more research and I staged that exhibition at the South Bank in 1984. So we had the exhibition yeah. on the South Bank, 1984, but I also did a memorial concert and the, on, on this wonderful, and we had people like Willard White on it. There's a lovely brown uh, a poster we've got with Willard White, uh, Joseph Marcel, Dame Peggy Ashcroft, Leo Ringer, and of course, somehow, I squeezed myself on stage, <laughs> not to sing, because I cannot sing, I sing, but to recite some poems. Oh, but that was a very historic, and I'll tell you something, yeah. that um, uh, there's a gentleman called Sam Wanamaker, okay. and Sam started the Globe, Shakespeare Globe in London. He right. also had played Iago in 1958, to Robeson's um, uh, 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 Othello, and I'd invited him, he couldn't make it, and you know he was overseas filming, and on that Saturday, while the show was halfway through, I saw this gentleman walking in. When I looked, it was Sam Wanamaker. He had flown from a set, film set in Bulgaria, just to be at the concert. And then you asked me how I got into Robson after. So how did you get into Paul Robson? Well, I was working for CBC Radio in yeah. Cardiff. Yeah. My very first job after university. And we see we see a picture there on the, um, on the screen. What, 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 where was that? Well, that's the famous picture. That is when Paul Robeson, 
came back in 58 because they'd taken his passport away yeah. between 1950 and 1958. He wasn't allowed to travel at all. Yeah. So when he came back, there was a Let Paul Robeson Sing campaign. And Paul Robeson sang, would you believe it, at St. Paul's. There were 5,000 people inside and 5,000 people outside. So that's a historic picture okay. of that thing. Yes, that uh, is Paul Robeson and St. And Paul's. Our, our next picture, actually, what, what, what is that? What is that now, place? this is when Paul Robeson played the role of Othello okay. in 1930 at the Savoy Theatre in London. In London. Yes. Historically, I mean, uh, allegedly, that um, there was an incident of the which was brought up in Parliament in that they didn't want him to go to the front door. So oh, what, what, what year was that? What, was, what year would you say that? Well, he, 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 did, he did that show in 1930 yeah. when, he, when he played Othello. Yeah. So it should have been around that time, but it was actually brought up in Parliament okay. ab about him being denied access to the, the front, uh, front entrance. But yeah, he overcame that. He went to bigger doors than the Savoy Theatre. Okay. Now, but that is a very... Now, this one here of Paul Robeson, again, this is a historic photograph for this reason. Yeah. It's the only time in the history of mankind when a war stopped because a man sung. So this is Paul Robeson in the Spanish Civil War when he went to the front and when Paul Robeson sung that day, both set of armies put down. Okay. What song was he singing? Did you know? Well, I, I, I don't know what song <laughs> he was singing. I have to ask him, didn't I? <laughs> but yeah. he would have done a rendition. Yeah. I mean, I know the favorites. This is the, next, the early exhibition that I did on Paul Robes. And as you can see, Paul Robes. And I did this um, for Camden Council. Yeah. So after I did the exhibition on the South Bank, mm -hmm. I then did another Robeson exhibition, which was this one. And you can see it there. Okay. This is a very interesting photograph. When I went to East Germany... That, I was going to say you went to East Germany, didn't you? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. This was in East Germany. And if you look closely, this was outside Breck House. Bertolt Breck, the famous, the famous writer, German writer, said I was taken to his house and shown around. So that was taken in East Germany. Marvelous, yes. Marvelous. And this is also another road. Now, this here was the, the, the poster for the exhibition. Yes, mm -hmm. on the South Bank. Okay. Historic photograph there, historic poster. Marvellous. And this here, folks, as you can see, was in fact the poster for the memorial concert. Willard White was not Sir Willard White then. Mr. Joseph Marcel hadn't done the Fresh Prince then. Yeah. Dame Peggy Ashcroft had been retired because she'd won a passage to India, the Oscar. Mm -hmm. I had bought out the retirement to perform for me. An actor called Willard White, called Mombria, uh, a, a Welsh, uh, a Welsh choir, and there's a guy called J.D. Douglas who sneaked in there. Imkia Singh, I don't know how he got in there, but I think I think <laughs> he's a support. Uh, where's this? Where's this? This now, is where. This is, is, that, back... is, that, is that you there? Yes, yes, that's me. That's what I. That's what I wore. I had hair in those days, folks. Before you say it, yes. um, uh, uh, this is a historic photograph. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Um, uh, extreme right is Dame Peggy Ashcroft. Okay. And she's the lady who had performed with Robeson in 1930. Next to her is the grand name, Elizabeth Welch. Elizabeth Welch was Paul Robeson's co-star in many, many the movies. movies yeah, yeah. So Don't they've all performed for me on my memorable memorial concert for Paul Robeson. So that is a very precious photograph for me. And where was that? That was at the Queen Elizabeth Hall. Okay. Yes, in London. Yes, Marvelous. yes. Absolutely. I was going places in those days. Yes. <laughs> I don't know to my this, career. This is part of the army. Now, uh, when I the thing about Paul Robeson yeah. is that he had lots of followers all over the place, mm. and whenever I did something an exhibition, somebody would hear about it. Now, I did the exhibition again at the Swiss Cottage Library in London, mm. and uh, this here is Lord David Pitt, right? Okay. Lord David Pitt. He was a friend of Robeson when Robeson came home in 58. Yeah. So I invited him to come to my exhibition, the opening. And he said to me, young man, I'm a, I've got to give a dinner at that day, a, a dinner speech, because he was the chair of the British Medical Association. Wow. So I said to him, well, 
Oh, but you can be late, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> and he thought I was cheeky. Yeah. You always got to push the envelope. So what, what Lord David Pitt did was that he told the people organizing the dinner, the key speaker, that he has something to do. Can they put back the whole program for 45 oh. minutes? Wow. So wow. the British Medical Association, they put back the whole keynote speaker for 45 for minutes. minutes. And when he arrived there, I'm sure somebody said, where were you? And he couldn't tell me I was in some punk. Because look at the hair. Watch my hairstyle there. <laughs> they had a jacket. What style did you call that? Oh, gosh. Funky punk. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a funky dread? Okay. That's the funky punk. Okay. And that's East Germany. That's East Germany, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and that's How, how long was you in East Germany for? I was in East Germany for about 10 days, yeah. and I've got to tell you. What right? year was this? What year was this? 83. 83. Man, it, 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 I sent a postcard from, from East Germany to my brother in Canada. Okay. Forgot about it. Mm. The Mountie police, they delivered the postcard. Yeah. Because East Germany was behind the Iron Curtain in those days. No, that's communist. I was just, just going to ask you that. I was just going right. to say that. Yeah. So they knocked on my brother's door. And they said, do you know anybody in East Germany? And he said, no. Are you sure you don't know anybody in East Germany? No. He kept denying it. Yeah. They got very angry. Okay. Because the names are the same, the surname. So they didn't know if it, this, this postcard was a spy, uh, you know, a spy thing sending information from East Germany. Mm. So in the end, they said, do you know anybody called Junior Noah Douglas? And he said, yes. And he said, what has he done? He said, oh, he just sent you a postcard from East Germany. <laughs> And he right. said, well, my brother is always doing some shit, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that happened. <laughs> so we were into the, you know, yeah. uh, innocent yeah. card yeah. from his Germany yeah. to Canada. So I, I understand the other story I need to tell you is this. Yeah. There was the policeman, an ex-policeman who worked in the same building. I was working for Wandsworth Borough Council at the time. And I told him I was going to East Germany. He said, don't fly from London to East Germany. Germany. I said, why? He said, why? my mother, she booked a trip to Bulgaria, and when I checked, she was on a file. Because even in those days, if you went behind the Iron Curtains to any of those places, Estonia, Bulgaria, you got on a file. Okay. They, they, yeah, 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 the, okay. the British government were monitoring you. Yeah. So I said, what should I do? He said, I'll tell you what. You jump on a plane, you go to West Germany. From West Germany, you take a coach to the border, to Checkpoint Charlie. Now, Checkpoint Charlie oh, yeah. is that spot between East and the West. Man, I have never been so scared in my life. Is that No Man's Land? Uh, no Man's no Land. No Man's Land, yeah. Because I go, I go to the thing, the little booth, as you see it in the movies, it's worse. Than, yeah. It's more frightening. Mm. And this guy, he's trained to look at you and look at you and know if it's you. And he stamped the passport and he gives it to me. And I had a suitcase and I had to walk across Checkpoint Charlie and the people with guns pointed yeah. at you as you walk. Yeah. And I had to walk. It's not a long walk, but it felt like a mile. It yeah. was no more than about 12, 13 to 15 feet, the yeah. walk between the east and the west. But with your suitcase, the suitcase felt heavy. My feet felt heavy. But of course, Checkpoint Charlie and live to be here to tell you the tale. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, absolutely marvelous. Yeah, 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 absolutely yeah. marvelous. Yeah. And you actually played. Let's let's talk about when you played Muhammad Ali. Oh you actually gosh! Played, you actually played Muhammad Ali. Who's that Ali. guy? Who's that guy? Is that you? Hang on, hang on. who's that handsome guy? You? <laughs> no, 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 no. Is that you? Ne let me see the next. Let me see what, what's next. Oh gosh! Are these twins? <laughs> Are these two handsome devil twins? <laughs> let me see what the next. What's the next one? Oh. Is that you? He said, I'm a, I am you? the greatest. Uh, you're, the, you're the greatest, yeah. And I, I gather you had some... Uh, your, your, your... Oh, wow. Now, keep that one on. Yeah. Wow. I'm... What what the pecs, the, the pecs. shoulders. I want to hire that guy for my movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I gather you had some reaction from uh, Mohamed Ali's oh, second man. wife. Okay, the, the story is this, right? Yeah. Um, uh, 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 I, I, left, I did economics. I studied economics at Cardiff University, yeah. right? While I was there, I got the acting bug. Muhammad Ali was my father's hero and my hero as well. So I decided to write a one-man show, really, on Muhammad Ali. Mm. There was a narrator, but it's just two of us. So I took that to the Edinburgh Festival. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the thing, right? I am totally unknown. I write a play. I haven't got a producer. What do I do? So I picked up the phone. 
and I booked the venue in, 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 in Scotland. I booked the train tickets for the actors. I booked the whole everything. So instantly I became a producer without knowing I was becoming a producer wow. on my very, very first show. Yeah. It's years later I realized I was producing. So I took this play to Edinburgh. It's called The Life of Muhammad Ali. So let's go back to the one with Ali because I'll tell you the story about the, the one with, 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 with... Now this thing there, there's another one with the black and white. I okay. showed that now this, one, yeah. this image, true story. Ma Angelo Dundee is, before, is, is in, in Cardiff. The house, please tell I know who Angelo Dundee is. Right. Could you tell our audience who Angelo Dundee is? Angelo we, we, Dundee. Got all this, we got okay, all, we got all ages. The younger folks. Okay. All ages. Younger folks, Angelo Dundee was Muhammad Ali's trainer. So in all of the photographs in the books, you will see Angelo Dundee. Okay? He knows Muhammad Ali like nobody else. That's right. Okay? So Angelo Dundee is in... Is in, is in um, uh, uh, Angelo Dundee is in uh, in Cardiff, yeah. and he's doing he's doing a, a, a box. He's he's in the corner of a boxer. So I go to the weigh in, and I wait for everything to take place. Mm -hmm. At the end, I show this photograph to one of his uh, one of his assistants, and he looks at it and he's taken aback. I said, "Do you mind if we show it to Angelo Dundee?" So Angelo Dundee is sitting down, and we walk from the, his back. And I present, I said, Mr. Mr. Dundee, I'd like to show you this. And I showed him that. And he said, that's my guy, that's my guy, that's my guy. <laughs> In other words, I've seen that before, take it away. That's yeah. my guy, that's my guy. Why should it to me for? His number two looked at it and he says, Ange, look at it again. Angelo Dundee, he looks again at it. And he says, where's my glasses? And the sister said to him, Ange, you're wearing it. <laughs> and Angelo Dundee could not believe that, that was not Muhammad Ali. That was not Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, 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 it, right. it fooled Maha, it, it, it fooled him. So, um, uh, I, I, I was a method actor, so I beefed up for it. But I played Ali twice. We'll talk about that later. But that was a, a, a very interesting photograph. I took it around. But I, I was learning the business then because I started out as a, a, as an actor, really, a writer. Yeah. And when I can get people, that's how I became a producer. And uh, I did. I did, I used to go to Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. to do plays. So yes, that, that early photograph happened. Yeah. And you've actually, you, you've actually done quite a few books and, and, and plays, haven't you? Yeah. I, I did the book, um, uh, I don't know if we've got it on screen, but uh, my first, it was the black and white, it was, um, uh, uh, it was called Caribbean Man Blues. Yes. And Caribbean Man Blues is a book of poems. Yeah. And uh, that's it here. And uh, gosh, this guy was handsome when he was young. Who's that guy? I don't know. Is that it, was, guy? it wasn't me. <laughs> Where does he get those glasses from? <laughs> more, more Watts collection. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was your was that your first play? And that was my first book. Your first, sorry, my, yeah, your yeah. First that was book, my yeah. first book yeah. called um, uh, Caribbean Man Blues. Yeah. And what did you have? What did you have after that one? Well, I tell you something interesting about that. Mm. Um, uh, my my career could have taken a different line, for this reason. When that book came out. At the time, there was a, 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 a Apples and Snakes, which was a, a company that was um, a performance artist. Yep, mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 oral poetry, whatever you want to call it, performance poetry. I was on their circuit, and because of the the, the poems, it resonated with some people. I was being booked all over the place. Right. I was Benjamin Zephaniah. I'll tell a story about Benjamin, Benjamin later in a minute because he was he was he's a local boy. Yes, and the past right. in a great great guy. Benjamin to all his family. He was a lovely, lovely guy. I'll tell you the story about Benjamin quickly now. We were doing a, a, a reading at SOAS, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, University of South, anyway. So he's on the bill. Now in those days, folks, in those days, Benji used to smoke. We know him not smoke any longer. He said he gets high on life, but in those days, he was backstage doing a roll up. So I go to him and I said, Benjamin, you can't smoke that there, you know. He said, why? <laughs> I said, there is a, an undercover policeman in the audience, right? He said, well, so he leaves backstage and he goes and he looks for this undercover policeman, right? Mm -hmm. And he comes back and he said, so everybody there, he cannot see the policeman. So he said, I'm not seeing the police there, man. I said, you're looking for a white man, aren't you? He said, yeah. I said, it's a black undercover <laughs> policeman. <laughs> 
Because yeah. I was the Africa's officer. Well, if officer. And this guy used to follow me everywhere I went. Yeah. You know? But yeah. I, I, I didn't know he was a policeman at the time. Yeah. This black guy befriended me and he used to be in the gym. And then one day he was talking to me outside my office and his walkie talkie went off. <laughs> That's when I realized wow, I had my own undercover private wow, police officer yeah. tracking me. So when I did the gig at Suez, it said, Benjamin, you've never heard a person curse so much. When I told Benjamin Zephaniah that the undercover policeman was black, he went on stage, man, and he got the mic. He went even before his time. He couldn't wait to headline the show. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely great, brother. Yeah, but yeah, but I'll, I'll save that book. And yeah. while we're talking about Benjamin yeah. Zephaniah, I must yeah. say, guys, there's a memorial being unveiled on Sunday um, at about three o'clock in Hansworth Park in respect of Benjamin Zephaniah. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for letting me know. I, w I will be there. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely I, marvelous. I, I, I will be there. It's, it's absolutely marvelous. Uh, and you, you, you've had a, quite a few more books after that. I mean, let, 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 shall we talk about the, um, this? Because we're running for time. I know oh, time, oh, is, time, oh, time, time, time is time. Okay. Time, time is going. Okay. Um, we, we, we're going to fast forward. This is the poster of the famous black heroes in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. The play that went to the West End from Hackney Empire. It became an international hit. I made many friends through this play. And this is not name dropping, but many people, famous people came to see it. Mm. Uh, Shade came to see it in the West End. Yeah. Nobody recognized Shade. Yeah. When Shade came Sh to the show. Shade. Shade, yes, yeah, sorry, sir. Shade. And uh, I recognized Shade. So I took her upstairs in the VIP. So she says that she didn't know who I was. And then at the end of the play, the, the principals would come on stage, including the musical director, the writer and the director flip. And when I came on stage at the end and she recognized who I was, this guy who had taken her to a seat, she just got up and started waiting at me. <laughs> and everybody was looking at her like she was yeah. a mad woman. Because, yeah, because she sat there, yeah. you know, watching the show. She didn't know who I would, the writer of the play, mm -hmm. had taken her to her seat. Yeah. So she, she did that. Um, uh, Martha Rees came to see the production. But yeah. let's tell the folks what it's all about. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Black Heroes in the Hall of Fame yeah. was a tableau musical yeah. with seven different scenes. Okay. So you had the great sportsmen from Muhammad Ali to, 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 to you, you name it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You also had in the, uh, the great kings and queens of Africa. So the great queens of Amanato, you, you know, all of those people, mm -hmm. the great kings, Menopotopa. Akhenat and all of those kings were in that, okay? Then you also had the freedom fighters, Toussaint Louverture and all the people who fought for the liberation of black people. Mm -hmm. They had their own scene. You also had a, a, a scene called the, 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 the Great de Debate. It's kind of the three wise men. It's a discussion between Marcus Garvey, um, uh, uh, Malcolm X, and the Martin Luther King. Yeah. And uh, I did it, and a producer at the BBC saw it and made me rewrite that thing just for Radio 4. Yeah. So, 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 so that, that is the poster of Black Heroes. It went to Jamaica at the World Theatre. And yeah. the, uh, now in London, this is Bernie Grant. Wow. This is Bernie Grant when he came to see the show, newly 87, newly elected MP, mm -hmm. and he was happy to be on stage. In the far corner is, is, is the, the, the guy who had the idea. Flip Fraser is in the corner, and I'm holding Bernie Grant's hands there. And the, the, next, the, the, the next image, I think, is... Uh, uh, Angela Davis. Angela Davis. Power. <laughs> I, uh, power to the people. <laughs> Angela <laughs> Davis. Angela, I wrote, the, great, the great Angela Davis. The great Angela Davis. I wrote the speech for Angela Davis from yeah. Black Heroes, yeah. and she came backstage. She wanted to know how was I able to write a brand new speech for her in the character because it sounded so much like her. It resonated with Angela Davis. So I explained to her that I had an album of Angela Davis speeches when she was young and I know how she talked and you know, the hip and the this and the that, you know. So yes, that was Angela Davis. Now, 
I, I, re I recall having, a, I recall reading the book. The very first book I read from Angela Davis was um, If They Come in the Morning. Ah, really? That is the very, very first book. Wow. I, and this, 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 the thing that was in this book, you know what I mean? I, I was fascinated ah. about her life, you know what I mean? It was absolutely great. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a very, very nice moment reading that book, you know what I mean? And if you, if you go on my Facebook page, yes. you can see it as one of the books I've actually read. Okay. It was absolutely marvelous. No, I, 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 I would check. Lovely, lovely, lovely lady, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely, yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Black Heroes was a, a show that educated our people about our history, yeah. our ancestors. Yeah. And I'll tell you one little story. Mm. Um, uh, I was living in Walthamstow, yeah. and I was going home with my bag, six, seven o'clock, it's getting a bit dark, and I could hear footsteps behind me. And I walked, and I heard, look at and there was this big guy. I said, oh my gosh, and I started walking faster. <laughs> and this big guy kept following me, and then the third time, when I walked fast, he, he kept almost there. And I turned around. I looked at him and he said, excuse me, sir, are you the guy who wrote Black Heroes? <laughs> <laughs> eh? And uh, he wanted an autograph. <laughs> I tell you, it changed my life. I tell you what, yeah. he said to me, that show changed my life. Yeah. He said, I was hanging out with the boys. I didn't have an identity of who I was mm -hmm. as a young black man. But that show, when I saw it, I realized we had our ancestors were kings, they were queens, yeah. you know, they were learned people. That taught me two lessons. One, never assume. That's because right. he was the black guy following me yeah. and he's walking quick, I assume he's going to mug me. That's right, yeah. What, about, what about when it's open in Jamaica? Oh. Tell, <laughs> you, tell us about the story about uh, one, of those, one of those great singers in Jamaica. <laughs> okay. Now, this is true, right, folks? When we did the show, all the who, the who came in a Kingston from Ghetto Man to Uptown Man to Downtown Man mm -hmm. came to see the show. The show was sold out. The show was doing so well that we actually booked, we bought out the uh, show that's coming kind of after us. They were going to do the whole month. We paid them, man. Go about your business. Mm. So when the show started, people were mingling and they wouldn't get to their seat quick enough. So part of my job was I would actually um, give backstage the okay to, 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 to sit down. So one day, it was a Tuesday, in the second week of the show, I'm going and I'm looking and there's a guy, there's somebody, he's not going to his seat, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to sit down. I'm not going to sit down. I'm not going to sit down. Five minutes, five, five minutes, <laughs> minutes, minutes three minutes, I don't see no again. Him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, final curtain call. <laughs> final call. Please take your seat. This man is taking his seat. <laughs> so me vex. Me vex. So I'm thinking... You're uh, well vex. Oh, yes. He's only back my show. I've got, I've got 1,400 pe 1400 people there at the World Theatre. Mm -hmm. So I walk up to this guy to man handle him to throw him out. As I walk up and I look, it's Jimmy Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Cliff yeah. didn't want to cause a promotion, a commotion, mm. so he waited yeah. at the back in the dark. Yeah. He didn't go to his seat until the show started. Wow. Right? Yeah. So, man, I was about to punch him. It turns from, <laughs> I've got a pen. Because you are a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to punch him. You're right? not, you're I'm about to punch you're Jimmy. You're about to knock him out. <laughs> to knock him out, right? <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> sorry, Jimmy. You deserved it, right? So, now, uh, this is true. Yeah. I'm not making this up. Uh, Two days later, yeah. on the Thursday, somebody turns up and they're doing the Jimmy Clip number. They, they're staying in the dark. They're not going to their seat. You're begging them. And this person, he had, now, Jimmy had a red dashiki shit. I remember it very, very clearly. Mm -hmm. This guy had a gray shirt jack. Right? Mm -hmm. I said, well, if he's, he can't be a performer. I can throw this guy out. I, I may not be able to throw Jimmy, but I can handle this guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell him about himself. So I'm walking up, and as I walk, because it it's dark, and the Jimmy's dark, this guy's dark. When I looked at this guy to throw him out, it was P.J. Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> from from, from a PM. Five years now, Jamaica. <laughs> I mean, I know, I've never met him, he's very tall. <laughs> Is he a little guy or he's very tall? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, can you imagine? Tuesday, Jimmy Cliff goes in that sport. Two days later, the former Prime Minister, PJ Patterson, comes to see Black Heroes and he goes standing in that sport. 
You know what I said to him? So, you can't stand there. That is Jimmy Cliff Sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I mean, DJ must have been wondering, who is this madman? How dare he call this sport Jimmy Cliff Sport? Me not see no Jimmy Cliff Sport number there. <laughs> <laughs> So you 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 actually yeah. get some what a wonderful experience yeah. um, through this. The, yeah, this I mean wonderful. one of one of the most moving ones as well is when um, uh, Rita Marley wow. took took yeah took the kids you know because you know Bob Marley had about lost a picnic about twelve eleven mm -hmm. and uh, but she she murdered all of them you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah 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 and uh, the some of them were very very young mm -hmm. so she took all of most of Bob Marley's picnic them to see black heroes yeah and she came backstage yeah and she said to me. JD, the kids say, can I take daddy home with us? Can we take mommy? Mm. Can we take daddy home with us? Meaning Bob Marley. Mm. Because there was somebody playing Bob Marley on stage. Yeah. And in the young mind, oh, my yeah, they thought yeah. that was Bob Marley. Yes. It was a guy called Courtney, you know, yeah. who, who, was, who was playing it, you know. And so she came to backstage to me and she said, Bob Marley's kids ask her, can we take daddy home with us? Mm -hmm. I was shocking. So I said to her, Rita, what did you say? And she said, I tell them, Daddy has got to go back to heaven. Wow. We cannot take him home. I mean, oh. how poetic. Yeah, very, very poetic. How poetic, yeah. yes. Uh, you also played, um, what, what role did you play in this? Um, oh, in, in this, in, in this now, the, 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 in, in Black Heroes, mm -hmm. I played Bishop Tutu yeah. in, 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 in Black Heroes. I don't know if you guys have got it in, 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 a, in, in a pink cassock. So I was the fighting bishop. <laughs> <laughs> He was, a, he was a part in Bishop. Yes. And, uh, and, and who's that one? The, that is another interesting thing about this story. This, this picture is this. I didn't tell my mother. She only wanted me to be a priest, by the way. My mother always wanted me to be a priest. Anyway, I let her down badly. So my mother come to see this show at the Shaw Theatre. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, she doesn't know it's me. After, she said to me, you know... I then halfway through when you were talking, I realized it was you. I didn't recognize your face. I said, what did you recognize? She said, it's your hands. Wow. We've got same hands. My mother and we've got same hands. So when my mother saw that photo, saw me performing, mm -hmm. then the, she realized that it was her son performing. I also did Akhenaten uh, 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 where a bit of the chest was showing wow. for the Akhenaten. I, I did, I did that. Uh, that's me, they're playing Akhenaten, mm -hmm. the King Akhenaten. I played about four or five roles, yeah. this Egyptian king there. Yeah. I was going places back in the day. <laughs> tell, us, tell, us, tell us a little, because I want to talk. No, 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 no the, 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 before you, you, you ask me the question, there is um, a once only yeah. we, we, we inducted on stage yeah. One person live yeah. in the Hall of Fame. Okay. You know what that my person might be? Um, Have a go. He's an actor. He's in a sitcom. He Joseph, plays... Joseph Marcel? Yep, yep. That, that there is when the actor, Joseph Marcel, the only person to be inducted live into the Black Hughes Hall of Fame on stage, and that was Hackney Empire. Yeah. yeah so that, that photograph is historical. Yes. And, and if, in case we don't, some people don't recognize him. Tell us, tell us. I know what he comes in. Tell us what he's, he's, he's comes in. He, okay. he comes in a very the, the well known comedy, isn't he? He he is the actor who plays <laughs> who plays Jeffrey in in the Fresh Prince, Prince of, of Bel Air. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. he you know he's also a wonderful. He's in the top five Shakespearean actor Actress. in this country. Yeah. Top five. Yeah. Uh, you know why I say this? I have been watching Mr. Marcel. Before he became very famous, yeah. I saw him in Master Howell and the Boys at the, at the National Theatre. Mm. I saw Mr. Marcel at the King's Theatre in uh, in London playing Othello. Yeah. And I got to know Mr. Mar well, I wouldn't say get to know him, but I, I worked with him in 1984 when I was doing the Paul Robeson Memorial Concert. Yeah. I got him as my narrator to come on stage. So yes, I, I, we, have, we have inter... Our paths have crossed over the years, oh, yes, sir. And um, how, how did your path how did your path cross? So you say your path has crossed. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> now you're pushing me. <laughs> I'm a, uh, a guy. I mean, we're from the same island. That oh, helps. Okay. The, you know, I always say people when they say where are you from. Mean, I said your path has crossed in the island. Oh my gosh! Now this photograph yes. 
was taken last week in Derby. Okay. Mr. Marcel is currently doing a play, School for Scandal. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have not seen it as yet, please go and see it. It's touring nationwide all over the country. Just Google School for Scandal Tour and you will see this wonderful actor. Um, and that was taken last week in Derby when I went to see him perform. Wow. Yes. Absolutely yeah. marvelous. Yes. Absolutely right. Now, I, 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 must, I must catch you because before you go, because we're, we're, we're burning for time. Yes. Before you go, I must ask you about, um, who, who, who is this? Who is this? This is... Um... Now, when I played, when I played Ali the second oh. time in Black Heroes, mm -hmm. somebody came to me and they said, there's a lady backstage who wants to see you. And she's insisting that you come down now. Well, it's in my underpants. I said, I cannot come down now. <laughs> I'll get arrested. Yes. I said, I've tried that trick before. Yes. Underpants yes. in public. It's it doesn't especially, work. Especially in those days. Especially in those days. Right? Now, now, no, now nobody will take any notice. <laughs> so, so I go back. This is in the Chicago Regal. Yeah. Now, the Chicago Regal is like the Apollo in New York. Yeah. It holds 2,000 things. And we broke the record for, 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 for performances that we did. Three shows in one day. Eight o'clock show for the kids, a matinee, and an evening show. We played for 6,000 people in one day in a 2,000 venue. We broke that record in the Guinness Book of Records. Anyway, so this lady comes backstage and she said to me, I didn't know who she was. She said, my name is Belinda Ali. Wow. And I froze. The wife of Muhammad Ali had just come off stage and she said to me, I had to tell you that your performance of Ali is so amazing that I will tell John John to come and see his father when he was in his peak. And I said, who is John John? He said, my son, so John son. Muhammad Ali. Wow, yeah. So yes, yeah, so that is Muhammad Ali's wife, second wife, Belinda, who because of my performance of Muhammad Ali mm -hmm. came backstage to thank me for doing the job. Yeah. Great. great. Yes. Um, Tell us about the, the exhibition you have on the typewriter. Um, oh we, gosh, we're, we're, um, we're, we're coming to the, like, the, like the close. And you also say you got a surprise. And I need to ask you about your mother also when you're okay. From. This typewriter, folks, mm -hmm. is the typewriter on which I wrote Black Heroes in the Hall of Fame. Yes, it's invaluable. I mean, there will never be another like it because of the immense popularity of the show. Yeah. Yep, so that is, that is it. Now, folks, everywhere I go, I'm a man full of surprises. Okay. When I introduce myself, I always introduce myself as this is JD, the one and only. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I do things nobody else can do. Okay. Now, I want to pass my host a book. Yep. Okay. And he does not know what's in that book. No. And sir, read, look at this book. And see who signed it. Wow. Paul Robeson. He has a book, show it to the camera, with Paul Robeson's signature. Paul Robeson have actually held that book. Wow. Yep. Paul Robeson, yep held that book in his hands when he signed that book. Wow. History, folks. Marvelous. History. And now I'm holding that book. And now you're holding <laughs> something. More, more history. <laughs> more history. More history. I totally had a surprise for you, dear Thank sir. you. <laughs> I totally had a surprise. Absolutely. And the other thing, I, I want to show you I'm another <laughs> scene. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story, right? <laughs> when I found out how valuable this book was. Don't sell if I give you back. <laughs> <laughs> I went and I got an exact replica. Yeah. So I've got exact replica like this book. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to nick it now, the lady who actually wrote the book was called Mary Seaton. Yep. Yeah. And the um, uh, Robeson, she said to me, uh, this was his copy for a while. So when it was Paul Robeson's copy, she wrote to a devoted couple, Mary Seaton, London. So this is what the lady who wrote the book, Mary Seaton, yeah? Yeah. Seaton, she signed that 
to Paul Ropes when it was his copy. To a devoted couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is Ropes and his wife. Yeah. And then Robson passed the book back to her. So that book once belonged to Paul Robson. Marvelous. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So it, it, it is something it is that I thought I would share with you. Thank you very much. And the Paul Ro Freedom Ways, this was the magazine publication uh, that had lots of Paul Robeson's work in America mm -hmm. and photographs of Paul Robeson. So, you know, you can touch it. Okay. It, it, it's from, a very, it's from his son. His son gave me that. His, his son gave me that. Wow. Yes. Absolutely yes. marvelous, guys. Get that. History in the making here, guys. History in the making. Yes, marvelous. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you for that. My, it'd be my pleasure. <laughs> All of... <laughs> I, I, where's I, I my should, bag? I should have bought the dummy one <laughs> and slipped yeah, you the dummy but one. I'm, but I'm no, let you but I'm no dummy. <laughs> no, no. What I would have done is last, lastly, I'm, because I need to do this. Yeah, um, go on. Tell us a little bit your mother. Your mother. Okay. Um, uh, the greatest influence in my life yes. is that lady, Clemens Louise Douglas, who gave me birth many, many years ago. I got a call. I was living in London. I gave a call. Mm -hmm. Got a call from my mother, and uh, I used to call her all the time. And one day she just said, "When are you going to come and look after me?" You know, West Indian parents. So mm -hmm. I thought that was time to pack up. So I sold my house in London. I moved up to Birmingham, and I lived with my mother till she died. Okay. And then uh, I'll tell you something. I have. I have. I have I've performed on big stages. Mm -hmm. I have organized. I organized the 2012 um, Jamaica's Independence Celebration at the Symphony Hall. And on stage, I had all the Jamaican athletes on stage. Mm -hmm. Beverly Knight, all of those people. Big production. One of the biggest I've done. I have done the Queen's 90th birthday concert, thanks to Beverly Lindsay, at the town hall. I have done some proper big shows. Mm -hmm. I have met Paul Robeson Jr. I have met Dean Peggy Ashcroft. I've met lots of people. I've, I've done lots of work. But, here it is. The biggest, my biggest achievement was when I looked after my mother. Looking after my mother was my biggest production, mm -hmm. my biggest achievement. Yeah. That lady, I love her. And I tell you why I love this woman, right? More than anything else, I, was, I, I did a play called The Jackie Wilson Story. Yeah. And uh, I invited my relatives from overseas. I had money in those days. I paid their passage to come to England to see the play. And it, uh, uh, when the, the last night, my father was there, my mother was there in Leicester. And then I let all the actors go out and they were signing autographs. I waited for half an hour to come out. When I came out, the crowd who had had the actor's autograph wanted my autograph because I was the writer, producer, director. Mm -hmm. And so directors don't normally sign autographs. So anyway, I waited and there was a crowd around me. I saw my mother and I was trying to get to my mother. Ten, I made signing autograph, trying. Fifteen minutes later, I finally got to my mother to, 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 to hug her. And I said to my mother, Mom, are you proud of your son? To which she replied, what about your economics degree? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, I've got people waiting for my autograph. Yes. People, and that meant nothing to my mother, typical West Indian mother, as far as she's concerned. Yeah. Why? I sent you to be educated. You are supposed to be an economist, yeah. not a stage writer yes. because I want to be an economic journalist. <laughs> Nobody said, what about your economics degree? In front of about 35 people. <laughs> so I love that lady. Great, my great. mother died 28th December 2020. Mm. Gone but never forgotten. You know, and I wrote this poem for my mother. Um, uh, even, uh, even now, you're dead and gone. Even when they put me down. Even when they call me a clown. I still remain your favorite one. To my mother. Marvelous. Yes. All right, lad. J.D. Douglas. Yeah. Let me say, what time is here? It went yeah. quick, didn't it? <laughs> Let me say thank you for coming to our studio. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely marvellous. Yes, thank you. A lot, sir. Enjoy the show. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. J.D. Douglas, the great. The one and only. 
One only. I come from Walcott country history. where the language is dialect and poetry. I call him, I also call him a history maker. Which <laughs> is absolutely man. And I also call him the greats. Oh yes. You have you have me talking about giants. Yeah. Giants. JD yeah. Douglas is a giant. We say thank you for coming into Breakthrough TV. Wonderful program. Guys, let me say thank you for tuning into the program. Well, we are at the end. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the program. Leave your comments. And don't forget, you can catch us back here next week with another What's On Your Mind with Virtual TV and Carl Campbell. God bless you. Catch you tomorrow on the Drive Time Show. Carl with the C News Star Radio. Thursdays and Fridays, Drive Time. God bless you. Take care. Mr. Producer, sir. Big work.